Good morning, traders, and sorry uh, about being late in here. Nine minutes. Um, we had some technical issues. Uh, we had some technical issues yesterday with GoToWebinar. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, if if you guys are having issues, um, then the you know Go-To solution is to log out and then log back in. Uh, it worked for me. It worked for a lot of a lot of people yesterday. Uh, hopefully, though, we, we shouldn't have issues like we did yesterday. Uh, so um, uh, anyway, uh, I imagine that uh, they've got it kind of figured out. Um, but uh, uh, that's the uh, uh, solution uh, in, in the interim. Um, okay, so uh, well, welcome to the webinar, Pro Trader webinar series. Today we have Scott Polsini, a futures trader. Uh, Scott's going to go through his same process that he does uh, for the uh, advanced webinars that he does every Thursday for us here at Bookmap. Uh, and this is part of the education that you get when you subscribe to Global Plus. Uh, you have an educational course. You have daily advanced live forward-looking webinars about hindsight. We read the current market and give insight to where price may move next based on what we read and book map in the order flow. Uh, and then <coughs> we have two days a week. We have J Trader, a stocks trader, and Scott Pulsini, futures trader. Uh, and uh, watch them go through uh how they read the the order flow apply it to the way that they trade uh so this is all included uh in the education so uh, it's a nice offering as for education i encourage you to take a look around the web at others uh no i have not seen anyone offer anything quite like this uh and it, it's just all complementary with your global plus subscription uh anyway Let's go through some disclosures and, and turn it over to Scott. Uh, you guys know who Scott is. He's been trading for over 20 years. Uh, and then uh, during the years of 2002 to 2005, Scott was responsible for trading about 10% of the S&P E-mini futures volume. Uh, this is pretty incredible. Uh, it almost sounds um, unbelievable, uh, but uh, his trading size that uh, it would just uh, really, um, you know, just boggles the mind. Uh, one tick, I'm sure, was you know several thousands of dollars, uh, ten maybe twenty-five thousand dollars or something per tick, or twelve twelve thousand five hundred or something. Uh, anyway, um, uh, Scott now focuses on uh, both trading equities and futures. He's an expert scalper and has an innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within price patterns. Uh, he's uh, it was written in the book uh, by uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Brett Steenbarger. Uh, about, uh, uh, you know, tr uh, trader performance. Uh, he was featured in that, so you may have come across him that way. Uh, here's Scott's contact information. He does offer mentorship and uh, educational services. He's got a website. He's got um, a trading room. He's got educational courses. Uh, you can get some special deals from uh, Scott with these links here. Uh, you've got his email and his Twitter as well. So uh, he also has, has a trade copier service now. Uh, and... Um, uh, if you have questions about that, best to reach out to Scott or use one of these links here. I'm going to paste them into the chat right now uh, so that you will in just a minute or so, and you'll have them so you can click right on the link. And you don't have to copy them down here. Uh, I need to go through some disclosures because, um, uh, well, we always go through the disclosures. You should understand what you're getting involved in uh, here. Uh, so uh, uh, please listen. Uh, and he will be trading live in here. Uh, it is in demo paper trading mode, uh, and it's only for educational purposes. So anyway, uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You have the hypothetical performance disclosure here as well. Uh, this is more for uh, automated trading, but uh, you might want to read through that. Uh, okay, enough said. Let's turn it over to Scott and let him take it away. Are you hear me, Bruce? Yes. yes. 
All right. Bit of a crazy morning. Technical difficulties here. I was having technical difficulties with the, the new software I'm using to track my trades. And, and there's 45,000 setups firing off. And these markets are crazy right now. So um, I have not done anything yet as far as uh, putting on trades on here. But I was going to. Um, We'll get into this this newest uh, as well. This um, this sweeps thing. It's really really interesting. I can this is hopefully opening up a whole possibly new new world of setups. But uh, we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyway, pre market you had this uh, in the Nasdaq. <clears throat> you had this uh, stop run here. This much. There we go. Um, not it. Hold on a second. Anyway, it was threshold. It was, let's see, that was at 140. And then I saw these, uh, we call, we're calling them snakes in the room until we find a, a better word, word for it. These are these sweeps. A lot of times you'll see these sweeps obviously associated with stop runs, but you'll see them sometimes that they're not stop runs as well. So anyway, the zone was pretty important pre-market. Um, I hesitate trading zones pre-market going into the open though, because a lot of changes, you know, as these stocks open up. So I did not take this trade, but this was a, um, you had an ATR move away. You had the retest of the zone the way I trade these uh, conservatively. And it actually ripped up here and you put in, there was another stop run up here. That one never retested, but this whole zone retested. And this led to like a 200 point move down uh, that I basically just watched because I had a lot of stuff going on. But anyway, Came down here, These, uh, this was a bunch of sell ice, this black zone. We haven't retested that zone yet either. Uh, here, that was this. And now we currently are trading in the zone where a lot of bias came in. So I'm just waiting for, so what I've been doing the last two weeks in my trading room to prove to you know the traders in there that have 400 things on their charts and have all this conflicting information and they're struggling. Um, to make money that the, the simpler you make your trading, the better you will do. So the last two weeks I have been trading, well, week, week and four days, I've been trading uh, nothing but the setups, regardless of them. We'll go, we'll, ice March ice for by ZW. We'll go over some of the, um, some of the, some of the market structure stuff, you know, like NASDAQ here, for instance, is, you know, this is not definitely not bullish, even though what happened yesterday, we held this area. But anyway, you know, I'm not, I will look at this and this is very important, but I'm just trying to prove to them that you can make money just trading strictly real time volume setups because that's what drives the market. So um, I've been doing that for a week and a half and I actually, let's see here, I'll show you guys quickly. So this is the new, um, put this down. I was having issues with this thing as far as this show me with an open week trade from last week. But uh, so I've tracked all my trades since last Monday, and these are nothing but volume setups waiting for a full ATR move away. We'll get an all this retest failure. Um, this is actually off because it's showing me it has an open trade. I've been going back and forth with the uh, support, but this is this is about I think it's 15,000 profit um, in trading nothing but setups in these markets for the last uh for the last week and a half so i'm just proving to these guys and you guys that you can make money that the, you know even if you have to reset and go straight back to trading these setups and learning how to trade these setups and i have a course on book my market marketplace on my website on how to trade these setups you can literally just trade these and make money is my whole point i know that's pretty long-winded but I'm going to put a link. I'm going to put the link to this uh, trading because this is my. I was using TraderView. I was having a bunch of problems with them as well. But this is like TraderView on steroids. So I really like that they're set up here on how you can see how you can see here. Let's just quickly look at this stuff while nothing's going on, kind of. Um, but you can see here, like it shows you 1% percentage. So this is, again, just really helpful to track trades. So I'll put this in here because I get uh, my members of my room and you, you guys that are lucky today to be on this webinar will get a discount to this as well you get 50 percent off the monthly or 50 percent of 50 percent off the yearly if you use this link i'm trying to figure out how to post this 
a post this net um, Bruce if this doesn't go to all then you could uh, put that in there so I just yeah, want to everyone show you that. see that, that that's but the there. whole point is all I'm doing right now is when these setups come in <clears throat> so for instance this is big bias right now I'm waiting for an ATR move away, five minute ATR, average true range move away from these zones, a retest and a failure, half ATR, I'm entering the trade. And that's all I'm doing, regardless of where we're at on the charts, et cetera. And what, what I'm doing this week, so last week was just strictly playing zones. This week I'm strictly playing zones, but if it's an important area with confluence, um, so for instance, like this is a good example, and this is why I should have jumped on this trade in pre-market, but so, this is an A plus trade, right? So the market broke down from this balance area. This was this ridiculous move up after the Fed meeting yesterday. Where do we hold? We held the high volume node of this balance area. This is an A plus trade because when markets break down, a lot of times they'll return to the high volume node, HVN, and reject. So if you get a volume set up in here that's bearish, I was taking it anyway, but I when I want to put on more size, more allotment of my daily p l on this type of trade because it's an a plus setup so that's what we're doing this week i haven't had very many of those so far but um so i'm trading strictly volume setups but if it's an, an awesome area i make it a it's an a plus trade and i put more size on we'll get into that as well once we get a trade on here but <clears throat> so anyway this is not atr right now in nasdaq i'm what, currently watching this zone and there's a couple zones in es we'll go, we'll go over here so you can see here the five minute ATR is almost 38 points, meaning I can't do anything until this market moves away from this current setup. Again, this was, this is, it's almost 200 by icebergs in here. I need to see a move away, 38 points away, retest failure, or 38 points away, retest failure to go long or short, depending on, again, which way it goes. So. This move down earlier was we got <clears throat> down about 95. So this was not, this was about 25, what was that, 30 points. So it wasn't a full ATR for this moment, a little lower. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, this was not even a full 30 points. So this is a fit. I don't know which way I'm trading this zone yet because we haven't gotten ATR away. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, <clears throat> even the S&P, nothing but buy ice coming in here. So we opened up, there was a bunch of sell ice at the open. This is black zone. You can see this here. There was 1,200 sell ice here, another 1,200 sell ice here, 2,400 all on this black zone. And then we came down here <clears throat> and the, the buy ice just really started to layer in, right? You had this, this, this. And I actually had to expand this zone. So that was the first first um, wave of buy ice. You had a thousand there, another 800 here, another 1700 here, and that was just I, this was this zone originally. I had it like this, right? That incorporates that. Then as we sold off, more buy ice came in. So I had to expand the zone because they were basically right on top of each other. And then you had another thousand, thousand, seven hundred. 600 so this is another three three thousand ice all on here so i expanded the zone down to there and then we'll get into this uh the sweeping stuff as well too but this new sweep thing but so this is the zone so then we came up here we're still on this zone so so the way i'm trading these is you know say this didn't come in this bias did not come in right so if this would have moved an ATR away from here, which it did, retest failure, I would have taken I would have taken this short, which actually would have worked out. But I am defaulting to the most recent setup, which makes sense, right? You, you know, it's whatever happens most recent is the most important. So I was not willing to take this short off of here because it had ripped out of this current buy ice zone, right? So again, if this was not here, I would have definitely taken that short, but the buys came in and you can see it stopped it. So this is the most current setup. This blue zone so i'm trading off of that so if we come up in atr retest failure here i'm going long atr retest failure here i'm going short regardless of anything else this is independent and i'm sure i'm going to show you guys that you can make money again this, this is one trade so it may not work out but over you know a string of trades you will be profitable just trading the volume 
And then again, if you can layer it into important areas and then increase your size in those areas, and we'll get into that again, um, then you'll be even more profitable. So the ATR in here right now is seven points, which is pretty elevated. So meaning I need to see out of this current zone, again, it's incorporating all this by ice, seven points out of here off the top of the zone. So that is, <clears throat> just say 4708 is the top of the zone. The bottom of the zone is 4695. So I would need to see this move all the way to 4715. It's a little too far. Retest failure, and then I get in around a half ATR. I've changed to three quarter of an ATR because I've been getting literally. I'll I'll get the full ATR move. It'll retest the zone. It'll move away half ATR. I've been getting in, and literally like eight of my last ten trades, it's been the exact tick, and then it I've been ticked out. So I'm going a little farther than half ATR from my entry. So we'll get into that as that happens. But that's what I'm waiting for there. Or if this breaks lower, I'll get in there. I'll get short. Um, so waiting there, gold, just setup after setup, firing off in here, just buy stops after buy stops. So let's just let's just now back up and go through some of these um, the bigger picture stuff, right? This is again, I'm trading these setups in a vacuum, but it's really good to know what the bigger picture is, right? So you can, you know, and you stop stop by NQ 178 contracts. Let's see what's going on here first, and I'll come back to this. So you can see there's 145 and then another 77. So this is about, it's over 200, like 210 buy stops. So now we can make this zone and you can see the, the sweep. Oh, yeah, I'll get into that here in a second, but I wanna draw the zone where that started. It's a different color. So now we have a stop run on top of this buy ice as well. So this is the most recent setup. So I will trade. I still have to wait now for an ATR move away, retest fail, or an ATR move, retest fail. Granted, if I do get in, so say I got in short off of this most recent buy stop run, we just heard fire off, I would still be in this zone technically. So it's a little more risky, but this is the most recent thing to fire off. So I will go short, even if we're in that zone, right? So short would be a half ATR or three quarters ATR. So right now, again, the ATR is 37 points. So I would need to see this come all the way down to 16, 110, retest this zone, and then a half ATR. We'll just say half now to make it easy, say 18 points below here. So I'd be in right around, my short would be right around 16,130, then I'd risk an ATR above this zone, right? So that is, that's a big risk. So you have to adjust your size. You can't trade the same size when the markets are more volatile, you will blow out your account. So you have to cut down your size to incorporate the current volatility, right? And we talk about this every week. We have this in my room, there's been a bunch of iterations of this, but this is the, this is the um, risk calculator. So what you do is you put your, your trading account size in, and this is saying you're going to be risking 2% of your trading account size, which is some traders just risk up 1.5%. 2% is pretty aggressive, um, but you can, you know, 2% if you trade in micro, say you got a $10,000 account, nothing changes here. It's just 10% of the value, or it's a one tenth of the value. You can keep all this the same, and these are just micro contracts versus the real size, right? So if I'm risking, for so an example, just to know as this, if this moves an ATR away, retest. Right, so if we get the 38 points away, retest fail, I'm in an 18 points. So that's 18 points of risk right there. Then I have to risk the size of the zone. So this is another, this is actually pretty small. So that's 10 points. So that's 28 points total. Then I have to risk an ATR below here, right? So that's another 38 points. So that's 66 points I have to risk on this trade if this comes back, right? So then I go to my little handy dandy and I go to 66 points. And I can only put on two. So say I only was risking 20 points. I could put on five. See the difference? But you have to follow this or you will blow out your count, period. I'm not going to get into that again today. We talk about it every webinar, but 
<clears throat> so that's the most important thing you could do is, is to obey your stop loss rules and your and the size of your trades. All right, so this needs to get to an ATR is 38, a little over 38 points. So I need to see this trade to 95. I know it seems like a lot, but this thing is whipping around like nothing. I mean, it's it's, it's flipping 50 points at a time, so it's, it's not a lot, trust me. So we need to see this get up to here, and then it retests, then a fail, and then it will go long. So we'll see how that pans out. So we are approaching, we have not retested this this big sell ice zone. You could go short off of this. Um, it's not, I see every day, you know, markets react off this first time up, but the problem is you've had a lot of that happen since then, right? The best trades on these zones are when they initially first move away, you don't see anything new come in, retest fail. This is, you could short this on a retest fail of this zone, this black zone, but again, you gotta remember, stuff has transpired since then, right? So you could have puking already, so on and so forth of the guys that got caught in the zone. So just be careful trading those zones if something else has occurred since then. Since then. All right, hopefully that's not confusing. Um, oh, so gold. Where is that chart? So, you know, every morning in my trade room, I get on and we go over the state of the market, right? You still wanna know, even though with my, this experiment to show everyone you can make money just trading strictly real-time volume setups, you still wanna know where we are, where we are bigger picture, because you may say, hey, I'm not taking any shorts. I just put this in the room. You know, for instance, you can see here, this is my trade room. Someone just said, um, it's down here. Someone said they were going short, if I can find it. There we go. Short, short GC at 1797. I, this is right as we got on the webinar. I said, be careful on shorts, major fail breakdown yesterday. So you still want to know, you know, the bigger picture stuff. So what did I mean by that? Well, this thing was looking bearish for weeks and weeks and weeks. You can see this going back to the you know middle of November. We had a balance area. Tried to break down, retest the dive my node again, HVN. Is where the most volume traded in a balance area. All balances is two-sided trade with trader placing bets. Broke down, we retested that, that failed. That's the normal, that's what usually happens when we break down on a balance. And then we built this balance over a few weeks, right? Since 12-1, a couple weeks. What happened yesterday after the Fed? See the difference here? So on this one, let's clear it up. We did this, we did this, and we did that and we built more balance. This one, we did that. We didn't hold the HVN. We went right through it. This is a failed breakdown. This is one of the best setups you can trade, right? This thing should have ripped lower, put in a buying tail, and then right through the volume node. This is an extremely bullish market right now. Bigger picture. Doesn't mean you can't take shorts. And if I get a short setup on this webinar, I will take it. But my point is, you know, because markets do oscillate, rotate, but my point is your best trades in here are going to be on the long side because of the bigger picture. So you could allot a bigger percentage of your trading capital on long setups, right? So when I when I got back in the business about three years ago, again, I got between 2013, 2017 ish, I was knocked out of the game because I, you know, I had to support my family. I couldn't make money trading. There was no book map. I was like every other, every other retail trader out there just trading off this stuff. And you know, even though I'm a pretty good technical uh, an analyst, I just you still don't have all the information if you're just trading off bar charts. Period. I, you know, it's just how it is. So I I was average at best, probably below average, and I couldn't you know support my family. I had to get out of the business. So when I got back in the business, I was going because I was so jaded from making millions of dollars in you know this ES, and you know it all went away one day because of the this was back in 2006, 2000, late 2005, 2006. When the you know the algos started to take hold of the market and there was very low volatility and my method of trading where I was just trading this order book all day long, every day it just went away as far as click trading because these algos run the show. That's why nowadays you can't trade off of this because it means nothing. It's fleeting. You can see that you know all this is is algos putting in pulling orders. You can't 
you're not as fast as a computer. I was one of the fastest clickers on the, on the planet at one time, but I wasn't as fast as a computer. So that knocked me off of my game. So when I got back into trading, I wasn't even going to trade futures anymore because I was so jaded PTSD from making millions and getting, you know, crushed. And it wasn't even algos. There was, you know, other factors with guys manipulating the market and so on and so forth. But I wasn't going to trade futures. So anyway, I started studying with the firm SMB Capital. Uh, I'm sure you guys see them. They're on the, they're on the, uh, they trade basically stocks, but I was going to learn stocks. And I studied with them for months. And one of the things they teach their traders, they, they don't just teach them, they require it, is if you have an eight, so you're supposed to make, be making a playbook every day. And we talk about this in my trade room all the time. We talk about it in here. You should have exact playbooks where you look for certain scenarios, right? So this would be one of them, maybe, where you say, I look for fail breakouts and then I'm looking long, that type of thing. So they make sure that they follow their um, all their playbooks. But if they see it, if they have an A plus trade that they've you know seen work many many times, they are required to put more allocation on their trade on that trade, right? So back to what we were just talking about, how I said you shouldn't be risking more than two percent of your trade or your account size on a trade. Yes, but if you have an A plus trade, and this is what I'm doing this week in, in my room, I'm trading just volume setups. But now if I get an A plus setup, I'm trading more size. So you can risk two percent per trade. You should be you know, about 6% max for the day of your account size. So this means the most I can lose, so say the $100,000 account, uh, the most I can lose in a day is $6,000. Okay, so that's your trading allotment for the day. If you get an A plus trade, you may, be, you may say, hey, my normal trades are $2,000, but this is A plus, so I'm gonna risk $4,000 on this trade. So you're willing to do that because you know it's an A plus and your odds of, of that trade winning are huge, are much much better so you're willing to take that if you lose on it then you only basically have one trade left in the day but you're willing to do that and like i said s&p makes their traders put on more size it doesn't mean you put on you know you can even put on six percent if you want but if you lose you're done for the day and we've talked about this you have to you know contact your brokerage firm and make sure you get shut down it's you know your percentage allotment for the day to keep you in the game so that's a lot of talking. Um, so that's what, you know, that's what I'm doing this week at an A plus trade. So back to the gold trade, my point is, if you are seeing anything bullish in gold, if I'm seeing anything bullish in gold, this is, these are A plus trades because this is a major fail breakdown on a bigger time frame, right? So you, sh so not that I won't take shorts, but if I see longs, I'm gonna be putting on double size. So that was a long explanation for, what I'm going to be doing here. So let's just go over here what happened in gold today. So the, from the minute I sat down, I was like, buy, stop, run, buy, stop, run. And you can see these these zones here, right? This is going back to like, there's even another one here, but you had this one here, then you had this one here. You can see none of these were pulling back either. Um, and then you had this one here. I should take that back. So this this is this one here. You can't see the white, but this was a white zone. I just changed the colors so I can separate, right? So that's that zone. And then this just came in right before the webinar and I haven't even drawn that one yet. And we're still in that one. So let's just draw that. And then we can trade off of this basically either way. I'm hoping it's long just after everything we just covered, but it may not be. Let's change this color. You can see it kind of overlaps the other zone. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna delete this because this is the most recent zone. Get this out of here. Right. So now we are still in this zone, right? I think we are anyway. Yes. So how am I going to trade this? Well, I would prefer, if if we do this and this and this, I'm going to go long. I'm going to go long double size because I want to. The bigger picture tells me long. If we do this, this, and this. I will go short. It'll just be my normal 2% allotment of my trade. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, you want to you want to step on the gas on trades that you have high conviction, uh, you know, about the result. And, and the more you watch markets and have your playbooks, you'll know you'll know it when it, when you see it. Um, any questions, Bruce? Nope, nope. No, no, it's no. rather quiet. Okay. Um, so right now ATR is 20.4, so I'll say 21 ticks. 
right? So I, until this moves, 21 ticks out of the cell in this way or this way, I don't know what kind of setup this is. So I have five distinct setups. Actually, we have six now. We've added one more. And there's going to be a few more. Once I get into this sweep, this sweep uh, add-on, there's going to be even more because that thing looks pretty incredible as well. We'll get into that again in a little bit. But so when stop runs come in, it could be one of two things. It could be a dumb and dumber where you get the dumb money puke. Again, the retail trigger puke. I'm a retail trader too, but we are not as informed as the smart money, as the big, big money, right? So a lot of times you get the retail trader puke and there's no real buying behind it and it just fails. That's a dumb and dumber. Or you can get a stop and hold where you get the stop run and then the big money comes in behind it and continues to push it. And that's what's happened three or four times already today. We've had no failures of these zones since basically the open. So I, I'm not even going to know what kind of setup this is until it moves an ATR away. So whatever way this moves, this moves this way, this way, this way, this is a, would be a stop and hold. If this goes here and here and here, that's a dumb and dumber. I will go long on that. I will go short on that. If this happens, I'm going to trade double size because of the bigger picture outlook. So we will keep it on that. NASDAQ, <clears throat> still watching this current zone. Did this, did this move the ATR away? 50, what did I say, 96, yeah, 96, this needed to trade too. Pretty close. Got up to 90, 93, 90, 93 half. So that was about three points away from the ATR. And you got to keep an eye on your, because this ATR obviously fluctuates, right? We're using that to help us judge the current volatility. So you can see it's down to it's still 38 points. So we did not get quite an ATR above there. Um, you know, you can use your judgment on that. If you say, you know what, that we got within three points, I'm fine with that, then I want to buy it. But you can see here, we retested this zone. We did retest it and move a half ATR away. Let's see here, 85. Yep, so that moved 20 points. So this did not get a full ATR, but you could have said, hey, got close ATR and you could have got longer, but then you got to put your, your stop in ATR below there. I did not, I, first of all, I didn't see it, but I would have waited for the full ATR because I got to follow my rules and I would have avoided this potential loss right now as well. So let's see how, again, this is not, this needs to trade. So if I was long right now, my stop would be in ATR below this zone. So it would be down right in here, but I obviously did not trade that. So let's see how this pans out. Yes, ATR is 6.93, so seven points. Did we get seven points above this zone? Yes, we did. So here's the first retest, so we'll be able to trade this now, right? So this moved 10 points away. You can see that, 750. That was more than the seven points we needed. Here's the retest, so now Again, I usually go half ATR. I'm going three quarters because I keep getting stopped out of the half ATR. So I'm assuming I can go half size here. That part might be too much too. So half ATR, or three, half ATR is four. So that would put me at 11.75 plus I want to go another two for three quarters of my ATR. So that's uh, 13.75 is where I can go along this market. And I changed it. It was half ATR, but again, these algos, it's it's amazing. Like you go half ATR, it'll be the exact stopping point. So I'm going a little outside of that, obviously. Let's see my order in there. Hold on. There we go. All right. So if I get filled on that, I have to risk obviously the six plus points that I'm risking just from the top of the zone to my entry, right? plus the size of the zone. There's no way I can trade three here. It's gotta be two, at least it might even be one. Hold on a second. We'll go through this risk spreadsheet here in a second, then I'll show you guys. Uh, 13.75. So I got a risk, seven, what did I say it was? It shouldn't be 13.75, is that right? It's a seven, seven ATR. So three and a half points plus another point a quarter, point and three quarters. So that's 
or 525. So I was wrong on that. Sorry, I was thinking it was an ATR, 8 ATR. So 13, it's 13 quarter. Why won't this put the order in? All right, there we go. All right. So from here to here is about, we'll just say it's six, it's about six points, right? Then I have the size of the zone, which is this is a large zone as well. Again, I incorporated all that by ice, which I kept expanding the zone, which it, it sucks. I don't like large zones, but you got it, you know, it is what it is. So this zone alone is 13 points long. And then you have to risk, you know, to be able to let this play out, you have to risk another ATR. So this alone is 20 points. And then you have another seven points here. So now I'm risking or six points. So 26 points on this trade. Why do I do that? Because the, you know, the size that's coming in and we'll go over the bigger picture. I think if this thing gets rolling, it can move at least 50 plus points. So I am going to get at least two to one on my risk, right? So let's see what I can put on here. 26 points. Yeah. So I can put on two up. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll see if I get filled there. So like what I was telling you guys last week too. So there, you know, you, the zones, the, this stuff that comes in is the science. There's no disputing there's bias, there's bias, right? And then you got these swipes we'll talk about. There's no disputing this happened in the market. You don't have to trade the zones like I trade them. You can say, you know what, I'm not, I don't need to see a full ATR. I would, as soon as I see all this ice come in, as soon as it gets out of that zone, I'm getting in and I'm risking just below the zone, right? You, you really cut down your risk then, and that's fine. I, this is the way I do it because I've been watching this for two plus years, and this is the best way I've come up with to trade these zones so you don't get stopped out in meaningless areas, right? So you can come up with your own strategies on this. There's no disputing what this is, but how you trade them, you can trade them differently, right? This is just the way I trade it. So if you're on this webinar thinking, I don't feel like risking 23 mini S&P points, that's fine. That's totally understandable. One, the volatility is highly increased. So, you know, you better realize 20 points right now is nothing, as you've seen. You know, we're swiping 20 points at a time, um, but I'm putting on this trade with a bigger picture outlook, right? Where I think because of what, so what do you see here? What happened since the last couple of weeks, we built balance, we broke down, built more balance. And then this was the launch yesterday when the Fed met right through this high volume note. This is a failed breakdown. So I think if this trade, especially for all the size that has come in, meaning the volume, with all of these icebergs in here, that is fuel for a major run. So if this thing gets motor in and I'm correct on my call, this could go at least 50 points, maybe 100, just like it did yesterday in one straight move, right? So that's how I'm viewing this. And again, I have to risk a lot. Well, I'm risking a lot because the zones are so wide. The zones are so wide because so much volume has come in, right? So it is what it is. I love tight, little tight zones, but if you know, you've got to play what you're, what's happening in the market. This is requiring me to risk this entire zone length plus an ATR, right? So if I put this long, if I get filled on this long, I'm, yeah, I'm risking 23 points or whatever I said, but I think it can go 50 to 100. So we'll see. Or, or, so the now, so say I get filled there, right? If I get filled, my first exit is going to be automatically sort of noon for the last two weeks just to have some kind of structured environment. So the, the hourly ATR is 23 points. So what I will do to stay consistent is I will put, I will get out of half my position at a full hourly ATR above here. So I will sell. So if I'm getting in at above the zone, hourly ATR above the zone. And soy being ice ice for five. So the zone is 08. <clears throat> I will put my sell order to get out of half my position. So that'd be one at 31. That's a full hourly ATR. And then I will let the other one run until I see an opposing setup, meaning I need to see a bearish setup, right? So say this gets motoring, I get filled, I get filled on my one lot here, and then, then all of a sudden it just keeps going, and all of a sudden up here I see a dumb and dumber or a, a sell ice that comes in that stops this market and I get the same setup the other way. Well, I will get out of the full position, right? And then I'll look to flip the, flip the position. Um, but you can see here on, the, on this P&L, so what I tell you guys every week, trading is not a consistent, um, you know, you're going to make the same amount of money or, or expect to make money every single day, to, like, like a normal job. It's stay in the game, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, make a little, and then you catch 
the, the, the big trade, the trade that makes your month or your year, right? And you never know which trade that's going to be. So you just keep putting on your trades with your rules. So you can see here, most of these trades were normal. And then I had a couple outsized trades. So last week, I think there was two of them. There was definitely, I see, see this NASDAQ trade. This was on a two lot, I believe. Let's see. I know I got uh, half of them on the full interior. Let's see. Four, two. I think this was this was on the I think this was on the bookmap webinar, December 9th, where I got and originally got in this. I'm filled on now uh, that ES trade, by the way. So I'll, I'll come back there in a second. What's the date today? 16th. This was last Thursday, right? So I put this on in the webinar. Remember, I got out of two right away because I said I had too much time. I looked at the P. This was last. Go back and watch last week's webinar. It was in the bookmap webinar, or you can request it from Bruce. I put on four and I'm like, it swiped down. You can see how quickly I got. I'm like, wait, I have too much size on. This was on the webinar and I got out of two and I had two on. So I made this profit with a, I'm sorry, not that, where's my, right here, with a two lot, basically. The first first two, which I got, I took off like in, it was a 15 point swipe. I was out because I had the wrong size on. So my point is, I got out of one of those at an hourly ATR at the time. I think it was 100 points. And then I held the other one until, basically the close. I never got an opposing setup. So I was short and it, you know, it did this all day, screwed all the traders that get freaked out. I just held it because I wasn't getting an opposing setup. And if I would have got out of one, got, got one, I would have gotten out. Instead, it came to the end of the day and I covered the trade. And you get this out. I keep circling this, this outsize trade side, trade, right? You never know when it's going to come. So you just keep putting on your trades, following your rules. And there was another big one to your, to it. Uh, crude, I believe. Let's see. Uh, let's see. So this is not right. So this is why my p is showing 28,000. There's something with an open trade that it's recording. So that's what I've been going back and forth with them about, but to don't count that as a, that's not an outsized winner. Um, I'm trying to find, there was one other crude trade that I caught like 150 ticks on. I can't find it right now. I think it was I think it was just this, this one here, maybe. That was more than that. But anyway, point is, you want to just make yourself available for every setup. And then when you catch the runner, that's when you have your month making, year making days. All right, so we are short or we're long here. ATR is currently 6.68. So we're, I'll round up to seven. So I'm going seven points below this zone for my stop up. So it's all the way down at 88. See right at a spot gamma level, no, just below that spot gamma level. All right, so that's what I'm risking for this trade based on this, this iceberg zone that kept coming in and that's why it's expanded. I had it like this originally and then came lower and that came in and now that's that zone and that's what I'm trading off of. No questions, Bruce? No, really, really quiet in the, in the questions. Uh, this whole week has been kind of quiet in the questions, to be honest. So we're still in this uh, zone in gold and waiting for, again, I hope it's long because the bigger picture is long, but I will take a short in there, depending on what it does out of that zone. Let's see what NASDAQ did. So the bottom of this zone was 47.50. So you can see here, if, so say you did get long. So say on this, we just talked about this, where this did not get a full ATR above this zone, but it was pretty close and got within three points. Here's your retest, here's your failure. Say so you said, you know what, I want to go long. Well, if you're if you're following your the ATR rules, five minute ATR is 30, 30 still 38 points, over 38 points. Well, your stop goes 38 points below this zone, the shallow zone. You would not have been stopped out then you would still be in the trade. And that's why I use the ATR, right? So this zone was, maybe it was, let's see, 40, 46. Yeah. No. Say 48. So do we get down to 10? Sure did not. So the stop would have been down here 38 points below that zone. I would not have got stopped out. You see how, if you think these algos aren't trading off ATR, you're sadly mistaken. I mean, you can see this was real 
close to the ATR. And what I usually do on top of that, I'll go an ATR plus a few points because I don't want to be stopped out at an exact ATR. And that almost got there. We saw on the way up and almost got there. And on the way down, you don't want to be ticked to the exact ATR. So I will go a little outside of the ATR. I'll go like five points usually, four or five points in the NASDAQ, right? So my stop actually would have been down here. But the point is you would not have been stopped out either way. And that's why I do that, right? So now this is still technically a stop and hold, right? There's a stop run. That's this. There's your ATR. It didn't get a full ATR. We actually really don't even technically know what this is yet because it has not gotten a full ATR above or below. But like uh, what, the example I was given, if you guys said, hey, I don't care, came close enough, I'm going to go long, he would still be in this trade as a stop and hold setup. <clears throat> but we don't know what that is yet. So All right. Hopefully I'm not confusing you guys. Um, so now on to this newest thing, which is pretty unbelievable. Um, Got a, a okay. few questions coming in. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, first off, uh, yeah, Boris is asking, uh, Scott, how do you fare in the uh, in the COVID crash? Um, how is Bookmap able to detect algo uh, selling and mass? Um, I don't really understand that question. Bookmap detects everything. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> um, I, I guess like, uh, you know, uh, during the, the COVID um, when, you know, back in, uh, you know, a few years ago or uh, in uh, uh, February, March, um, you know, when you were trading then, uh, I guess uh, uh, just about, about volatility is the question uh, and, and trading and volatility. Yeah, I mean, it's the same stuff. You just, you have to, this is exactly, you know, it doesn't matter what, what time period it is, the, the setups are the setups, the volume coming, the real-time volume coming in is the real-time volume, and you have to adjust to the volatility. So it doesn't matter what the scenario, it's all right in front of you, right? You just, the, the things that you really have to monitor with trading these zones is the volatility in the market, and that's why we're using the ATR, and your and your size that you put on. This is, this is number one, number one thing you should be paying attention to before any setups, before anything else. You need to be putting on the right amount of size to not blow out your account because it doesn't matter how great you are at calling setups. If you don't have money to trade them, it really doesn't matter. So you have to protect your account first and foremost. Again, you know, most guys think, hey, okay, yeah, my stop limit's $1,000 for the day. I, I, I'll stop if I hit that. The odds of that happening, unless you're like a, a Zen figure, like you're a monk, where you can just be that calm and cool and like, oh, well, you know what? Gosh darn it, they beat me today. Very, very unlikely, right? And, and you think you can do it, and when you're level-headed, I think I can do it. But when you get in the heat of the moment and you start getting your head ripped off and you you see your thing down, huge money. You know, I talk about these stories all the time. I'm not gonna get in them again. You can get on the weekly webinars, you'll hear them over and over and over, how I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Two different days, I lost $800,000 in minutes because I did not respect my loss limit for the day because I was not thinking clearly, right? When you're getting killed, you do not think clearly, period. You will bring up how many guys, I mean, I, I, everyone on here who's been trading any, any amount of time could attest to this. How many times have you gotten killed in a day or lost a lot? You go back that night or the, you know when you're cooled down or the next day and you look at your trade and you say, what in the hell was I thinking when I put that trade up? Well, the point is you were not thinking. There's scientific facts on this, how your brain shuts down and things are invisible to you when you get emotional, right? So the point is you need to circumvent that however you can. So what I tell you guys all the time is you need to contact your broker and tell them, I need, I ask them, hey, do you have a stop loss limit for my account size uh, or for my account uh, automatically where I can say, hey, shut me off with this. Most of them do. If they don't, then you want a new broker first and foremost because brokers want you to stay in the game because if you're not in the game, they can't make money off of you, right? They can't make money off your commission. So almost every broker will do that for you. You need to get that in place first and foremost, right? And then you need to respect your actual independent, you know, your individual trade size limit, right? You're not gonna, they're not gonna do this for you, but you say, you call your broker and you say, so say you have the $100,000 account, say you have a $10,000 account. 
you call your broker and you say, hey, I need you to shut me off at six. If I hit six hundred dollars, you know, give yourself a little lead with commissions. You can say seven hundred bucks. If I said, if you have a ten thousand dollar account and you're losing more than seven hundred bucks a day, you're not going to be along around very long. So you tell your tell your broker, if I hit this, you shut me off. And all they do is they shut off your computer or your, your trading abilities, and you can't trade until Globex opens at five o'clock or five o'clock central, where you have a much clearer head. Right? I know this sucks. Trust me. It, it hurts to lose and then be done and be like, oh my God, I could have made it back. Trust me, over the long run, you're not going to make it back and you're going to you're going to blow out your account. So please follow this rule. I don't want to get into this like I do every week, um, as you know, in depth, but you you definitely want to follow that first and foremost because if you don't, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be around to trade and you're going to be working for the man for the rest of your life. I'm assuming most people on here want to become independent traders. And, and do this for a living. Well, you need to follow the basic rules of account management if you wanna do this for a living. If you don't, you're not gonna to listen to me. That's the whole point of getting on these webinars and listen to me. It's from 20 plus years of trading great and horrible where you guys don't have to go through the horrible side. You can be like, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna let that happen to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this set up so I don't lose $800,000 in a day, right? Obviously, hopefully no one would ever lose that, like I did, but that happened twice because I just would not respect my rules. And I'd have another $1.4 million in my bank account if I just would have got out at the $100,000. So again, I tell that story all the time. I'm not going to get into it right now. But <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's, you just want to I keep going into that, uh, that variable. But you want to, um, these setups are the setups. It doesn't matter if it's the most volatile market in the world. It doesn't matter if there's a new COVID strain. You follow your setups, you follow your volatility rules with the ATR, and then you trade them, right? That's it. <coughs> What's the other questions, Bruce? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you want to go on to, uh, I think you're about to cover the sweeps. Yeah, you're going to have to explain it a little better, too. But, you know, between this, so there's two different things on here. And again, I don't know, Bruce. Do you need Global Plus for the sweeps, or is it for the regular? For the regular? Uh, Glo Global Plus, yeah. Okay. So you have two different indicators here, and I've been getting questions in my room because we've been watching it this week. I'm not trading off of it yet, but the way I'm viewing it, and Bruce can chime in here as I talk about it. So these setups are just as important, or the, this market action is just as important as icebergs and stops, right? Because what these are is somebody dropping in size in the order book, right? So let's MQ stop, stop, sell, MQ 173 contracts. I'll get back into this. Let's actually, we'll, we'll see this real time, right? So if you did get long that, you got stopped out, but I did not, they never got a full ATR above there. So I did not put on that uh, long. I am long ES though, so that's probably not working out real well right now. Um, so that you can see this and you can even see, what, look at the sweeps here. So, so, so this, this is the way this works, right? Stops are always going to be sweeps, but sweeps aren't always going to be stops. And I'm going to show you instances of that right now, or in a little bit. But right now, let's draw this zone. So this start, you can see where it started. And this, this sweep, we call them snakes in the room until we find a better, because they look like snakes, until we find a uh, better term for them. But I have a feeling we're going to have some incredible setups with these, and I'll get into why in a little bit. So anyway, this is the stop, right? And it just makes sense that they're sweeping the book because you have to sweep, stops have to sweep to get out of positions, right? So there's your zone. So now what we will do is we will wait how this reacts to this zone and we'll either go short or we'll go long. Once again, what are we doing? I'm waiting now, now look at the ATR. It's up to 40, we'll say 41. I'm gonna round up, it's 40.42, 41 points. You may say, that's ridiculous. I can't wait for that much. It, okay, well then you're gonna, because you're gonna be randomly getting in in the, in the middle of nowhere because that's what the volatility is right now. So I have to wait for either 40 points below here, and retest and fail, or 40 points above here, retest fail. And that's the way I'm trading it. So let's take a quick look at the bigger picture to see this may be an A plus setup. So this up here would have been a great A plus setup when you got that short at the, when I was showing you guys pre-market because this is, this failed right at the side. So this broke down, we retested this, and this held where it should have to remain in an intermediate bullish state. This market is still intermediately bu intermediate bullish. Even though we did this, we did break out of this, but this is not as big as this one. 
first and foremost. And we showed we're still intermediate bearish because this could not get through this high volume. And then here we are. <clears throat> this right down in you know, where we're at now isn't a plus here, right? Because this could do anything. This could just start building balance. What you could do. If this is PI size for example, <clears throat> 838 compress. We'll come that in a second. So if this comes down to this, you could play a long off here. This could be an A plus. Sell and Q. 350 <laughs> got some size coming in now, so that's good. And then here you go. Here's your snakes. Here's your sweeps. All stops are sweeps, not all sweeps are stops. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to show you this. But now we have back to back setups. Right? And I'm going, I'm going to trade the most recent one, even though they're right on top of each other. You could make this one big zone. So I'm going to incorporate all the prices that happen in there. Right, there you go. I'm going to make these different colors so we can separate the two. All right. So now we have back-to-back -back stops. You can see them with the zones, and you can see them awesome with the sweepers. There you go. The sweep, I love the sweeps because it's so much easier. I know we have icebergs on chart, the icebergs stuff's on chart, but this makes it even easier to draw the zones. I love that <laughs> right there, right there. Right. So now again, we still don't know until we go 40 points, 40 points. How we're gonna trade this. Let's see how my ES is good. It's not feeling like it's doing very well. Yeah, that's not good. Let's see. All right, so where are we? Well, came in here. Still almost got ticked to the exact tick on my entry, but we're still, this has not violated the zone yet, right? Something new came in, let's see what this is. 1200 ice, cell ice in this zone. So this is the most recent setup, so I will draw this. We'll make it a different color. It's a setup, and the zone is inside this zone, right? This, this is definitely threshold. We'll go over the sweeps here too. In a second. Make sure I got all the this area here. It's black so we can decipher. That's that ended right about there. Again, I get questions all the time. How do you draw your zones? All you got to do is get your little cursor here across here and you go see where it spiked, where it started, and you can see that sweep. That snake right there. Okay, and I call the sweeps of snakes. And then that's ended right around there. And that's your zone. All right. So now you got a zone within a zone, but this is the most current setup. So what you could do here, you know, if you really wanted to, I'm not I'm just gonna leave my original stop in here. You could go a full ATR. This is a full ATR. So, oh, that's why, because this is lower. So I'm playing off this ATR or this stop was based on this zone. But what I will do here is I will. I could trail the stop. I can move it up now because of the new setup, right? So if this gets an ATR below here, I could stop out of this most because this is the most current stuff that came in. What's this here? Watch this. This is not threshold, but still inside this. So the bottom of this zone is 97. ATR is 7.3. So we'll say seven and a half. That puts me at 90 and a half. I'll just leave it there because I want to go a little bit outside of the uh, ATR anyway. So, but this is a brand new setup. So, what could I do here? Well, so if this does say this, this is what happens. This comes down, stops me out, or even if it doesn't stop me out. So, say it gets an ATR below here, it retests, it fails. I will get out of this position because of the new setup, and I will flip it short. Or, if this holds and it comes up here, ATR retest fail, I can add to this trade. And play this is a brand new setup, then I'll have two units on. All right, so we'll see how that pans out. <clears throat> so we're still in this zone here. We lost track of gold. Hopefully, yeah, we're still in this zone in gold. Put this up here. So now we're just waiting. I forgot to put on my, uh, my, uh, camera clean on my desk a little bit so you guys can see the mission control put this on here right. 
change this so you guys can see these monster screens. You got me, Bruce? You got the mission control? Yes, sir. Right. Let's forget to do that. All right, let's get this in over. All right, so we're just waiting to see what we do out of this zone in NASDAQ, see which way we're going to trade it, and see if we can hold this zone in ES, which I'm hoping because I'm already long. But again, if this gets an ATR below here, retest fail, I will get out of this because this is a new setup and it's bearish, and I'll go short. Let's take a look at the ES bigger picture. So this still looks really bullish to me, right? This looks different from NASDAQ. NASDAQ did this, held this, and failed. This got right through it. So this is a failed breakdown. So this looks bullish, NASDAQ's bearish, and all we're doing here is really building balance right now, above balance. So this looks bullish. So the way you can trade this as far as your A-plus setup, if this breaks out of this to the upside, this is making new highs, in my opinion. If it breaks below, that's not really A-plus to me because, again, this has been violated. If we move down to here and you want to go long, this could be an A plus trade on the long side, right? Because we would just be retesting the top of this or the high volume node, and this still will remain intermediate bullish. This is intermediate bullish, NASDAQ's intermediate bearish. It is what it is, right? I know it's conflicting, but this is going to be really important. You see what happened here. You have a buying tail, which is one of our four um, major areas of charting, and then you also have directional conviction. At the high volume note. So I can promise you when this thing, if this thing comes back here, which will probably be in about 10 years if we ever sell off, um, this will you will see a reaction. If you don't see a reaction, then that's gonna really tell you something. And that means we're going to zero. Let's get zero, just get around, but <clears throat> it's not gonna be good. Um, so my point is if we pull back to that area, that could be an A plus setup for our longs. So Let's see what's going on here. I'm still in here. The other market I'm watching, there was a bunch of stuff that fired off in soybeans earlier. It's here. It's just still on the zone. We had 300 cell ice right at the open. And we'll get back into this with these sweeps as well. 350, 150, 250. So you're talking about almost a thousand icebergs sell ice in this zone. So what do we do here? Same thing we do in every market. Doesn't matter the market you're trading, guys and girls. Volume is volume. This ATR is 1.86, so we'll round it up to two. So basically, two points out of the zone, either way. There it goes, two points. Retest failure, I get in at a point or a little more. I'm trying to go three quarters of an ATR to go long. You can see the liquidity up there. So that's probably where we're going because the liquidity is magnets. Or if it goes ATR, retest fail, I'll go short. You don't know until it gets out of the zone. Remember, these are loaded up traders and it doesn't matter what they're trying to accomplish. I can hear guys right now, oh, what do you know? You don't know what they're trying to do. They could have been hedging options. They could have been covering positions. Okay, well, there's someone on the other side of the trade. Somebody is caught in this zone when it moves out, and that's the basis for the moves. This is fuel for the moves. That's why you will get an outsized move once it breaks out of this area. Right? It's still in this zone. It's still in this zone. So back to the sweeps. This is really, really interesting because, let me find one when there wasn't uh, icebergs. Let's see. Uh, so let's even look at these stop runs, right? So this stop run, so out of this, out of this cell stop run, only half of them, Less than half of them were actually stops. The rest of them were actually guys sweeping the book. You can see this. There's five. There were 500 sweeps here, right? So that's interesting. There were sellers on top of the of the of the sweeps. Let's let's look at an instance where basically the sweeps were all 
or all stops, right? I saw some earlier in gold. Let's see, I think this is it here. No, pretty close though. So this, so this sweep, again, all stops are sweeps, not all sweeps are stops. I'll find some instances here, but you can see here this stop run, and you can see so it's color coded for whoever the passive passive party was, right? So black for me, I you can change it to any color you want, right? You come in here. I need these because I'm colorblind, so I got to make it black and white, especially with all the other colors on the chart. But you come in here. So I have for GC, I just want to see within one second 300 contracts. I make it pretty substantial. Um, but then you can change it. My here's my colors, right? Passive sellers, passive buyers. What does that mean? That means they're just sitting there in the order book and someone's sweeping them, right? So it's not showing you the aggressor; it's showing you who is sitting here getting the order, the orders taken. Right, that's that's important as well. That's called yeah, responsive I, responsive sellers. We're Go we're ahead. gonna I think we're gonna change that um, uh, wording and also colors because uh, the sweep is more about the aggressor. But uh, um, anyway, right. Well, I mean, all you got to do is make the colors what you want and just say yeah yeah and just flip, you know what I mean yeah. I can yeah, make these white we'll and say that was the aggressor. Yeah right. yeah yeah exactly exactly so um I forgot what I was saying now. So you can see, actually, this was 546 sweeps, and out of that 546, 370 of them were. Uh, zoom, zoom in there, Scott. Like, really, really zoom into that area because, like, this is where it gets really fascinating, uh, and and you can see precisely. See the red line there? That's yeah. when that's when the stop started to get triggered. Right. And we know that you know since since it's MBO um, uh, data that uh, those are stops. Uh, so right. interesting, as you can see, this 100 lot sweep, 96, that's what triggered the stop run. Yes. Right. So this is what I'm saying. So you can see that these came in before the stop run started. So this buying, and you can see, this is this buy bubble. Someone swept the market. These were passive sellers that got their orders taken from them, right? And then this sweep started this stop run, right? And then you can see what followed that. Here's your stop run. So these sweeps were actually the stop run. This one was not, like I said, all sweep, all stops are sweeps, but all sweeps are not stops. This is actually 25 and then 70 here. What were you saying, Bruce? Um, yeah, I mean, um, technically a, a stop isn't really a, a sweep. It's just, it's just a stop. I mean, like- uh, Well, you're still, uh, sweep, you're still sweeping the book of the it's, price. It's still, it's still an, an aggressor. Um, right. Uh, but <laughs> once, once it once it like sweeps at a tick, that that would be a sweep. Um, so uh, right, if there's enough size there to take to take that order, that's Otherwise, correct. It'll that's go correct. to the sub subsequent prices to get out of the order. Right. Right. And and you'll see. I mean, like this is the, in this example here. Like uh, j just for those that have questions about it, like uh, we'll we'll cover it during the uh, the weekly uh, or you know the daily webinars, uh, the advanced webinars. I'll, I'll zoom in and we'll go through the details. It is important to kind of understand what the distinctions are, like S Scott is describing here. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, but you'll see like how these markets actually truly work, um, and then you'll get kind of a different perspective on understanding these sweeps and, and stops. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, I, I won't take any more of your time, Scott. No problem. So I wanna, I like hearing about it too, because it's brand. I'm not using this in my trading yet, but I, I will be when you, you see some of these examples that I'm gonna show you, hopefully I can find some good ones. Um, so this was 39, again, ATR is 42 points. So we needed to get under 16,000 and that did not happen. So we did not get an ATR below this zone yet. This most current, again, you had this, then you had this, but we're trading off the, the most current one, right? So if this would have gone a full ATR and that was retesting and came back out, I would have been short, but we did not get, just like up above, we didn't get the full ATR, so I'm just waiting on this one. Let's see if we're still alive in the yes. Let's see here. So I'm in here too. Right, so why this is really interesting? Again, we're just starting. I've just been watching this the last two days. Like I literally texted Bruce two days ago asking him about it, like what it is. But the thing is, if you start seeing some of the size and these sweeps, well, a lot of times it's putting the icebergs in the stop. Like we have, I have thresholds, right? So 700 icebergs is a lot. 
um, or trading, it's tradable, right? That, that's a market moving size to me. You know, and I've been watching this thing for two plus years, so I know what what values. So those are the thresholds I use in my course, right? So meaning you got guys, and I still have some guys in the room that still do it once in a while. Like you'll see a 300 lot iceberg in the ES, right? Like, hey, I, there's ice in the ES. No, that's not worthy of trading. Like that, that's just, that can happen 85 times in a day. You want to see outsized icebergs outside stop runs that's worth trading otherwise you're just basically trading nonsense right so that's why i have the threshold so my point is for icebergs i have 700 as threshold so any iceberg that comes in over 700 i will draw the zone like this one was 1200 i'll draw the zone this one was not i didn't draw the zone but it was still in, inside this so it didn't really matter but if you look at some of these sweeps they're monstrous Right, so let's see. I want to see. I want to find one that's not part of an iceberg. Or uh... so. My point being, you could use. You can use that information to to draw zones just on that because it's it's just a different type of order, right? So we have stops, we have icebergs, but not not all traders use icebergs, right? Some traders, some big traders, just like to or, or stops. They just like to sweep the order book, right? That's still an important. That's still important information. So this could be, this is a whole nother, this could be a whole nother setup trading opportunity, right? So you can see here, like right here. So this was neither big icebergs nor a big stop run. Somebody swept 1200. So if, the, if I saw 1200 ice, I'd be like, wow, that's a lot. So why am I not, I, I'm going to, again, I just started to watch this, but this could be, this is a whole different setup, right? This is somebody, you can see the buying bubbles that ran over these resting, this is the black dots, that's the resting sell orders in there. So this area is very significant. It was 1,200 contracts that came in the market. That's still important, even though it wasn't an iceberg, wasn't a stop run, this is very important. So you could, and I will, once I watch this enough, you can see this works, just, I mean, look at this. This works just like an iceberg. So say this was an iceberg, what would we do? Well, we would draw the zone, right? Here's your ice, here's your zone. Well, what happened? Hey, look at that. ATR move away, here's your retest, here's your failure, right? So this stuff is gonna be just as, if not important, than the icebergs and the stops because the size a lot of times is so much greater. Like we've, been, I've seen a couple of times, I've seen NASDAQ, like this morning, look at this. This was when I was watching this morning and I didn't put on the short because it was pre-market and it cost myself 200 points, but besides that, like look right here. So this is showing between these two, and this was not even a ton of size, 126, and really no stop run, 100, 136 ice. That's not threshold for me, I go 150. But if you combine, look at this. This is 700 contracts in NASDAQ. That is a ton. If I see 700 ice, I'm like falling off my chair. There's actually more than that. S&P ice iceberg cell ES, 701 contracts. Like right now, I'd be like, wow, that's a lot. S&P ice iceberg cell ES. 700 for contracts. I'll come back to this, but you can see that stopped the whole market. This is going to be a whole new set of setups. Once I I got to go back and you can go, but that's what's great about, let's see what's going on here. So it's great about book map. You can go back and you can replay. You there, Bruce? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Great. Book map just crashed again. Rhythmic closed because of the following reasons. Simultaneous login. That same exact thing happened to me last week. You can see I lost all of my. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. Did, 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 I mean, uh, we'll, 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 we'll work with you after after this webinar. Uh, uh, because like, this is, has not happened since last. Bookmap didn't crash. Well, I know, but what something's happened with Rick, Rhythmic. I, Why this did, might, I'm not, this I didn't, might don't understand. Doing nothing. Happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, this is a rhythmic issue. Um, I, I don't know what it is. Um, mine's now the, issue, the real issue is I just lost all of my iceberg sweeps. All that data is gone. Yeah, yeah. That's not good well, for the, 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 let alone trading. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. The sweeps, the sweeps will still be there. Um, so uh, I understand. Uh, we'll we'll add uh, connect to rhythmic again, and and uh, it did. should show up. This is rhythm. I, I connected. Now I'm frozen. Gosh. Again, the trading is not hard enough. See, there's no sweeps in here. Oh, here you go. Yeah, okay. 
yeah. least they have those. All right. Yeah, th those will show. So why could they show those, but you can't show the, the prior icebergs? Uh, because this is, is a very simple condition in the, in the sweeps, um, that a, a time and amount that traded. Um, and uh, the, the MBO data is the metadata that's coming from uh, Rhythmic, and uh, uh, we can't offer backfill data on it. It's just way too heavy. Okay. All right, that's so I'm going to just draw this zone. We, we heard the ice coming in. I don't know exactly where it was because I just lost all my iceberg data, but you can see the sweeps. You know it was, again, it was pretty confluent with this. So this is the zone. I will put a trade on and off this zone. I'll add to this trade if it if it holds. If not, I will I will get out. Meaning, if I see because it's the newest setup, right? We heard it was sell ice. I just lost all my data again. So, but if this comes here, you know, again, the ATR is seven point two five. So if we get seven seven and a quarter points below here, retest fail, I will get out of this position and go short. If we go here, 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 I'll add to my long. Uh, but this is just completely, especially Nasdaq, because I was really eyeballing that zone and I just lost all of that information so we'll draw it here so you can see this sweep right here somebody swept down this i think they said it was i think it was a stop actually you can't see it on here yeah so that was all stops 903 and there's my connection close there you go only reason simultaneous login and when i was just sitting here doing absolutely nothing that makes no sense so anyway that was this so this was a stop run right here so we'll mark this up Sorry guys, I can't really control when that happens. I'm not kidding you, I've not had that problem one time since last webinar. Oh, let's just, we'll just leave it this color. All right, so I will trade off of this zone. This is the new zone that came in, 300 cell stops. All right, well, you gotta roll with the punches as my grandpa always used to tell me. I wanna break a screen right now, but you gotta just accept it and move on. See if I can get my uh, soybeans on. It's basically this entire thing. So any questions, Bruce? As I try to. Yeah, yeah, we've got a few few questions in here. Um, uh, what settings you have uh, for your stops? Uh, stop. I mean, sweeps uh, indicator. Sweeps, it's just, it's a total stab in the dark right now. Again, I just, so what I was getting at before that nonsense just happened is with Bookmap, you can go back. And you, so this is my question for you, Bruce, too. So if I go back, now that I have this indicator, if I go back and replay days, will this, will all this appear? Will all the sweeps occur, even though I didn't have it, you know, a week ago? If I go back two weeks ago, will I see the sweeps on the replay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, right? So right there, guys, you can go back, which I'm going to do. So I'm gonna be doing this weekend. I'm playing golf on Saturday, but other than that, I will be in here replaying days to see, like right here. Like, look at this. If you told me there was a 700 lot uh, iceberg order in Nasdaq, I'd be like, oh my God, that is just incredible. That's huge. So this is what I'm trying to get at is these are gonna be their own separate setups at a certain threshold. And again, someone just asked that. I don't know what it is, right? I don't know for sweeps, what is a lot, like if this was iceberg, like I said, my mouth would be watering. Sweeps could be a different type of threshold where it's not that important to the market. You know what I mean? As far as if you draw a zone or not. So I will know that because I'm going to go back. You guys can do the same thing. You can get in there and replay the day and just watch day after day after day after day because you have that ability. If you don't have all those feeds that my room, I, I give my room access to all my feeds for the entire year. And you go back and you just replay your data and you're going to see this. But this is very exciting because this is like another, it's, it's like the seventh wonder of the world. It's going to be the seventh setup. So anyway, you can see here, there was 300 here, 300 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this zone for right now. Again, because I lost all my, all the data. All right, so we're still on there. So hopefully that's making sense, right? So what happened here is, Actually, did we, was this, yeah, this is a whole different setup, right? So this was, these were cell stops here. That's where I originally drew that zone, drew that zone. Someone came in here and swept the order book. So this is exactly what I was telling you before. All stops are sweeps. Like anytime you see a stop run, you're going to see sweeps. But this was a sweep that was not stops. I mean, this was like 60. It's not incorporating 700. So 
this has to be important because this is it's just a different condition of the market but these are still orders there's still traders caught someone just swept there so whoever swept there they could be wrong you know again you, you don't know why they were sweeping it doesn't matter because there's someone on the other side of the trade so someone just got run over if it moves out of here they're going to have to puke if it moves this way either way this zone's important and you can see the snakes call them snakes here's your stop run and then you had this there's like a thousand contracts invested in this area that is very very important information whatever way this breaks is going to be a big move <clears throat> so that's very very exciting and i we've been talking about it in the room for the last couple of days i can't wait to go and make that this is going to be a whole new element to the trading yeah if you can um uh, scott put on your um uh stop iceberg uh, track um uh, indicators as well or on chart on chart uh indicator those are on as well they are okay um maybe well, this, uh, see, this this chain this, 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 this is so high because when you, yes. this is another thing that the developers have to try to fix. I know they got other things on play, but when you, so when I rolled the contract, it'll bring in settings for another product. Like it won't stay in MQ. So I'll have settings for another product. And then it'll also, for my alerts, it'll be like, it'll just say ES, even though it was MQ that I brought in. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's a bug. Yeah. Yeah. I know they have bigger things. It's not that hard to go back and check it and but it should be if you bring up nq you should have the same settings as your last nq month right so that's why you're not seeing the uh that, that was on way too high for the uh on chart so now i changed them to 150 stops are showing 150 iceberg showing 150. okay so what, so what else do you want to see here uh, then zoom into to that that um black um yeah stop run snake? sweep yeah whatever i'm gonna get you saying snake before <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yeah, you might have to to bring up the uh, or bring down the the threshold uh, still um, because there's going to be some stops in there for sure for stops. So bring bring it bring it down to like um, no not not in uh, icebergs as uh, stops. Um, well, I'll just bring, bring, I'll just bring it down both. to like ten. Um, well, let's see that fifty or something. I'll just make them ten. Yeah, that should both. go. Okay, so and then zoom into that area. So there's 42 at the top there. Okay, right. And so so and then keep keep zooming in. Um, and uh, uh, so you you'll see when the like like you were kind of showing before. Like here's your your book sweep. Now, um, you know we don't know. We just know that there is an aggressor. Um, it could be a, a larger player that just capitulates you know, and just says like, I'm out. And they sweep the order book like this. Or, you know, maybe there's a whole bunch of people just buying hand over fist, like we don't know. Um, however, at a certain point in here, uh, and we don't know actually know that either, where the stops were triggered, they could have been triggered way down below. Um, uh, if you, maybe if you showed best bid and offer as well, um, it, it would, uh, it, I do that. Uh, so um, where your trading panel is, like just the tool to the left of it on the, the no, the um, uh, padlock uh, icon. Yeah, click on that. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, best bid and offer. Yeah. So what's that showing? So uh, that'll show the, 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 the best bid and offer. So let, let zoom zoom out sure. a little bit, just a little bit. More, a little bit more, sorry. Out, zoom out, out, out. Like that? No, uh, uh, zoom out, uh, further out, bigger picture. You mean zoom in? Oh, zoom. Okay, I'm sorry. I was thinking. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So, so, and then, and then now, now, I'm sorry. Now you, now you need to zoom back in a bit. Um, <laughs> uh, because like, yeah, because you can see where the oh, best. That, that's, that's this line here. Yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, <laughs> zoom in a little further, a little further, because you'll see, and, and you, you'll know that this is an atomic event where one event took place and stops are being triggered along the way here because the best bid and offer updates afterwards. So we know that that is one event that took place there. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of, there's 42 stops that were triggered in there. Now, now zoom into the, the, the um, uh, yeah, the, the, that little area there where the, the, yeah, the blue dots. Um, so yeah, that's good. Um, so you can see like, uh, like somewhere along the line, like these, these are aggressive buys and they're gonna trigger stops. 
we don't know where they're being triggered. But this is why you get slipped, because at the end there, the, you see the, the, the and it's almost, it's almost always at the end. Uh, it, I think it has to be at the end, basically. Um, uh, you'll see when the, um, uh, it was a little bit before the end, but then it ends with the stops because they are at the end of the aggressor queue, basically. So they are getting stopped out. And this is why you get slipped. This is, you see that the stops start to, um, they all trigger at the end there. Uh, and you can see precisely when they start to um, trigger, or well, I'm sorry, not, what, not trigger, but when they start to uh, transact. Explain what you mean by slip, slippage, where you get filled at because, a worse price. Because Sorry. from this whole area, um, let me take a look. It's uh, from like 16.050 uh, uh, right there on all the way on up to 16.056. Okay, that that whole area, there might be stops in there, but we don't see them. We see the stops actually triggered right where that red line is for the stop uh, 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 run. Yeah, right. those we know that those are stop transactions, okay? But we don't know where they are triggered because this is one event that took place. So this one, this one trader, the aggressor, if he hits market buy, and let's say he's getting out of a position, um, his order is going to fill first. And it's just going to it's going to trigger or, you know, um, hit stops along the way, but they will not transact until he is done transacting first. Make sense? Right. So that's why you, you get slipped like this. Uh, and uh, and, you know, and you can see it. It's just it's all here on the chart. Nothing's hidden. Um, uh, the 42 uh, uh, stops and we know that those are stops uh, are at the top of the uh, of the range there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, some some guys, you know, if they put their stops in at, you know, 16.051 uh, or something like that, they're like, <gasps> you know, I just lost four or five points. So, so that so that's the way. I, what did I do that, wrong? What did I do that's, wrong? That's what the CME you know? does. They, they favor the market orders before stop runs. They put the stops in back of the market orders. That's right. That's how it works. Really? Well, it's not that they favor. No, it's, it's the aggressor. The aggressor puts in an order. Um, and that, so they, has, they, that yeah, I that guess that happens. makes sense because why should they, if they're the aggressor, why should they suffer? That's right. You know I mean, if someone, someone, no, it's like, here's my order, you know, fill me. And like, uh, this is, this is when we really get down to the nitty gritty and, and these like, uh, granular, uh, um, you know, anatomic, uh, uh, type of, uh, events here. Uh, this is exactly what occurs we're, we're right well my point is to say okay so say the aggressor comes in to this the aggressor right from here to here he can say he's got 300 to transact so he yeah. sweeps the book for 300 we'll say there's stop a bunch of stops at this price right and it triggers yeah. those stops but he will get his entire fill before they'll fill the stops as well that, that yeah I, that's that's important i didn't know that yeah that's how it works um <laughs> And uh, uh, then, uh, I mean, it makes sense too. Like, uh, you know, your, your order came first uh, and you transact first. Uh, and then, you know, these stops uh, are, they, they're, they unpack along the way, um, but they're at the end of the kind of aggressor queue, basically. His right. order um, is, has precedence because like, that's what came first. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then at the end, you're, you, those people just got stuffed, you know, with 42 at the end there. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are re get really upset about that kind of, I would be, I mean, that's like six, six. Right, technically, ago. right. They, they could have technically been like down here, right? And because this guy wasn't fully yeah. filled, they yep. got filled up here. Exactly. That's not fun. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's, that's anyway, um, uh, yeah, it, at these granular granular levels, and now now you can understand though. Like, look at that again though, and how you notice that that's kind of a high, right? Right. Well, that's that's like maybe I mean I'm I'm extrapolating this and starting to maybe think well okay, then that's a larger player puking, maybe, because they said I can't handle it anymore. Right. And uh, I'm out. Right. So uh, again, it doesn't matter. You know whether he was puking, whether he was initiating. There's someone on the other side of the trade, so that's what that's I always say. This area is what is important, right? You're you're never going to know what they're trying to do ever, right. unless you're God Almighty. But, but look, so look, look where 
exactly, exactly. But look where the, the that pullback came to, right where that large transaction took place, right? Yeah. Well, that's why you know, I drew the zone. This incorporates yeah. this stop run exactly. and this. So I'm waiting now. If this retest, I'm going to get short because yeah. this, yeah. this is now an ATR below this zone. too. This is what we were waiting for. Right. right. So, right. So this is so incredible the, information. It, 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 yeah, yeah, and I, I would love to see, um, uh, and I know this webinar is going on too long, um, and I'm sorry to, to hijack some of it, uh, uh, Scott, but but since you were covering this, I thought maybe I'd, I'd go over this um, uh, and try to kind of educate everybody at the same at the same moment here. Um, the um, uh, it would not, it would be nice to see the the difference, the kind of delta between um, stops uh, and uh, and the sweeps. Uh, or the stop runs, you know, uh, or the sweeps, I should say. So, how many are re real, you know, you know, stops uh, versus um, just aggressors? Uh, and you can start to extrapolate some, some maybe some significance from that as well. Yeah, well, that's what this is telling you, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, know, you can see the 63 stops, and you, but you can see seven, 723 of those were aggressors. So again, yeah. that is a ton of size for Nasdaq. So my point is. It is. You know, once I, there's going to be thresholds for this as well for these sweeps. But I mean, this is just going to be going to be just as important for zone drawing as the stops and icebergs. You know, once I once I really dive into it, and anybody can dive into it, all you got to do is replay your days. But this is you guys don't understand this information that you're getting here. I, I tell you all the time. I worked for you know for a couple of years at Wolverine Trading, and they had quants that would come up to you every day. Here, here, look at this. Try this. Try this. See if you like this. Like you have the same thing in Bookmap. Like this is incredible information like people staring at this have no idea like you can be the greatest chartist on the planet it doesn't matter you don't have all the information i don't care wouldn't it behoove you to know okay yeah well i'm looking at this balance area but hey i just saw there's 700 swipes right there they're caught right and you know hey this, this so you'd say this was an important zone i had this from other stuff but you could say wow that's information that's great information. Now I know, like I already wanted to buy this zone, but now I know what just happened there. That just, that is incredible information. Again, I, you guys, I just don't think a lot of people realize the edge that book map provides when you know how to use it. It's just, again, it's, it's the most powerful thing. Nice March iceberg itself. The most powerful thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I, 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 I have to agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty, pretty spoiled um, myself. I mean, dealing with uh, the team, uh, and them covering and going through some of these things as, as they're developing them, uh, it's amazing. It's 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 really uh, amazing to to you know see what they're coming up with. Uh, it's like you're like a kid in a candy store. Um, so right. um, uh, it's you know like Santa's workshop or something. Uh, uh, and it's just like wow, that's great. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, Listen, it doesn't matter how many algos, how much big money, blah, blah, blah. You can't hide volume. So no matter what, you know, they're trying to accomplish, when it all is said and done, you can't hide what, what you know, transacting orders. And transacting orders are what are, is what drives the market. Not algos screwing around with the order book that don't really fill. Like Bruce posted something the other day. I didn't want to comment on it because I didn't want to ruffle feathers at certain exchanges. But he, he showed, you know, a potential a spoof where like it was like this liquidity and it chased it down and chased it down and when the market came back up to it it just pulled right that's spoofing so how does book how could book map see that but the cme can't see it right but i didn't want to publicly respond to that but it's the truth right so what really happened you know spoofing is going on all day long whether they want to admit it or not the spoofing isn't what is important transacted orders is what drives markets so that's what you get with book map is you see what orders transacted not this nonsense Right. This is why you can't trade the order book anymore, because it's just fleeting nonsense that computers are. You're not as fast as a computer, but they can't hide this. They can play games all day long with this. They can't hide transacted value. And this is what I trade off and what you should be trading. Well, the, 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 the liquidity is you can't hide that either anymore. That's what's nice about Bookmap. I mean, like uh, it's it's plotted on the chart. You know, you, that's why you can see the spoof or potential spoof. Um, right. Uh, that's you know, posted the other day. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I, I mean, all we're trying to do is is basically take the data here um, and and uh, give you more transparency and insight to really what's going on within it. Uh, just like you're showing that candlestick chart, I mean, it's like night and day, you know. Uh, you, you, you know, you're looking at maybe like a um, 
you know, a Formula One pneumatic tire versus like a, a the, the candlestick chart almost seems like a, um, you know, a wheel made of stone or something. Um, <laughs> it's true. Uh, so, true. I mean, just uh, some really big distinctions. I mean, the, the transparency into this kind of, you know, in these markets are, are, are available to us now. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, we can take advantage of that. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hop off here shortly, but I've been on almost two hours. Um, I know there hasn't been many trades. I'm still on that long in ES, but what I'm going to do here, now this did get a full ATR below this zone, right? And this Remember, my stuff all went off, but this was the most current thing that happened in the stop run. We got 40 points below, 39 points below this zone, right? That's that. Now we're going to, if we retest, this comes up here. And this fails and i go half atr actually I try to go three quarter atr now again because the half atr has been crushing me i keep stopping getting it at the exact tick so a half of let's say half of 40 is 20 right we won't say it is but i'm just saying it's a little more than the atr right now but so if this touches this and comes back 20 points right around here i will go short and then my stop is going to be 40 points above this zone plus a few ticks, plus a few points because I like to get out of the actual ATR, right? So, and then I will hold that trade until I see a full hourly ATR, I will get out of half, meaning I will stay short until I see 122 points. If you think that's crazy, it's not because that's what the hourly ATR is. So that means I will hold this all the way down to here, I'll get out of half and or say it only goes 30 points and then I get a bullish signal I will, and then it does the same thing. I don't wait for the ATR retest to get out of trades, right? So say this comes down here, and this is how I trade, right? So this, say it hits a bullish setup. Well, for me to get out of my short, the minute this pops out of here, half ATR, I'm out of my short. To go long, I need to see ATR, half ATR go long. See what I'm saying? But I will not hold this for a full ATR. That's the one thing I've been doing the last two weeks too for the room, or I'm just consistently doing it every time. So again, if I end up getting short this, I'm holding it for 122 points, I'm out of half. 122 points from the bottom of the zone, full power of the ATR. Then I will hold the other half until I see a posting setup. An opposing setup might not come in just like I showed you that $10,000 trade. It was literally, I had a one lot on for most of that profit. And it just kept going and going and going until and there was no setup. If there's a setup, I'll get out. If not, I'm holding it. It just takes so much off of your mind where you're Very not. nice TC. One. You don't have all this conflicting thoughts like, oh, this is done. Oh, we're at the the third. We even talked about standard deviation of view wrapper and stuff like that today. But I'm not even going to show that right now because I don't want to confuse you guys. But um, you're just you're just trading simplistic buying, and you'll be amazed. I just showed you that P and L again. It's off a little bit because they had an open week trade, but it's still like a in the last since last Monday, it's up fifteen thousand dollars just and I'm just trading this. That's not trading big size. So if you're trading micros at the same size, you'd be up with a $10,000 account, you'd be up $1,500. That is a great return in a week and four days, trading nothing but volume setups, regardless of where we are on the chart. And the reason I did that, again, to show my room how, sim how it's, the simpler you make it, the better you do. And again, that's how I made millions of dollars. I didn't even, I wasn't even looking at charts. All I would look at was this. And I'd watch how the orders came in. Obviously, you can't trade this anymore. This is the same thing. So I'm showing you guys, come in the room and you'll see, you can make money just trading these setups by themselves, period. <coughs> Let's give this one more minute, see if we retest this zone. Uh, I gotta get off, I'm doing a lot of talking. Then Bruce, we gotta figure out what's going on here with Rhythmic. I don't know if I need to contact them. I'll probably, I'll probably get back in about two weeks on that. Or if yeah, I, I don't know. Did you reach out to, to um, second level support on the, uh, th this issue? Um, no. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Going to, okay. No. yeah, yeah, reach out. I mean, uh, th th it, it, it's clearly a Rhythmic issue. Um, and it sounds like, I don't know, somehow like, Maybe it could be even be their broker. I mean, like uh, somehow, like there's another login happening or something, and it kicks you off. Well, the thing, uh, yeah. I mean, so, I'm not doing anything. You see, I'm just staring at right. the charts, and then all of a sudden, it just right. goes off. I mean, again, it has not happened. Wait, so by the way, make it out of this long here because of this ES, right? We got an ATR below here. I'm gonna flip and go short now if this happens. So this was the zone. Again, I didn't, I lost all my other iceberg data, but this was this, what was this? Hopefully this was not threshold. No, it's only 300. 
So this was this area, right? You had snakes, snakes. And there was, again, there was, there was other stuff that happened here. It was icebergs. This was that zone. Here's your ATR. Here's your retest. Here's your failure. I'm going to get out and flip short because of the new setup. So half ATR, where are we at? We're at uh, seven, 6.86, so seven, so three and a half. I'll go a little outside that half ATR. I'm gonna go four points. See, it tested, retested this zone perfectly. It's not, it's not by accident. So 94.75, I'm gonna go a little outside. I'm gonna, I'll short at 94. So I'm getting out of this long because of the new setup and then I'm going short. So if that makes sense, I'm gonna put these things in there. working that uh this never tested the zone so i'm not going to short this it, it doesn't mean it won't right it could just i'll go around for a while retest and then i will get short that as well all right any other questions bruce for a half off <clears throat> uh yeah someone was asking here about uh if your you know your stop is reached do you want to, the broker to flatten and close all your positions um so uh, let's say you have other open positions, I guess, maybe even swing trade. I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what they're referring to. Well, they're probably saying. Like you maybe know, you're in soybeans as well as the ES and I don't, I don't know. Well, That's technically, you could, right? Because you can turn around. So say, I, I know what you're saying. So say your stop loss is 6% for the day, 600 bucks. Well, first of all, one trade, you should not be at your daily stop loss. You should only be at 2% first and foremost. But say it was an A plus to trade like we we're talking about, and say you are you said okay I'm going to trade 75% um, of my allocation today, so you know you can have a 6% loss on the day, so each trade is worth 2%, right? So you on this particular trade you're putting on 4%, so all you can lose for the day is 6%. So say you put on that 4, so say I put on an A plus trade, so say I again I have my A plus trade and again this is hypothetical. Say I, I end up getting short here, and I'm risking four percent of my my six percent that I can lose in the day. So now that's working, and now say it starts ripping back up, and it's about to set me out. But I have three other positions on that. If they all lose, now I'm at ten percent. Yes, you have to say tell your broker if you once you hit that because you won't hit it just with this trade, right? So say my allotment is six six hundred bucks for the day. Say so these are micros, right? If I lose this trade, I'm down four hundred. It doesn't mean you're still not at your 600 for the day. You still wouldn't be stepped up. But if your other positions are underwater as well and you're at the 600 or more, yeah, you have to have your broker just flatten you out and get out, right? You might be a little more than the 600 for the day, but you got to do it. If you want to trade this as, a, as an A-plus setup, if you don't want to do that, then each trade will be 200 bucks. It could still happen where you're, you know, this trade loses and the other two are about to be, you still wouldn't be over the 6%, but yeah, you got to have your broker flatten you out. I know it sucks. Trust me. Take it from me. It sucks, but it also take it from me. I'd have 1.4 million plus dollars in my bank account if I just would have stopped at my hundred thousand dollar loss limit for the day. It, it, you just got it. There's always another trade. Like someone yesterday in the room was complaining they missed a gold trade. I said, well, there's another, there's another thousand thousand trades where that came from, right? So it's like there's always another trade. There's always another day. You're not thinking clearly, even if you are you have to protect your account move out your whatever you're seeing that day it's obviously not working we you know get out refresh go do something else and come back tomorrow and trust me the markets will be there tomorrow for you I'll put the stop in as well while we're on here while i flip short uh six that's not a good six 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 um so i'm gonna go seven points above here because I go a little outside there, so 1075 is my stop out for this trade, <clears throat> for the short. Were you saying something, Bruce? Uh, no, sir. Okay. All right, that's going to do it for me. I can't talk anymore. My head's pounding. Um, <laughs> so hopefully, you guys weren't confused. We had a little hiccup again with the data, but we still were able to trade off this one zone now and then. And if NASDAQ retests this zone and fails 20 points below it, then I'm going to go short NASDAQ too. And then I got there is 40 points above the top of the zone. This is the other thing though, you know, not all markets retest the zone. So I'm doing this this week, this last two weeks conservatively where I wait for retests. Some days like yesterday when the Fed met, you had stop run, 
never retested, stop run, never retested. So you have to decide once again, this is the science, the zone's the science, you have to decide how you want to trade them, right? So I'm just showing this week. So that PL this the last nine trading days has been nothing but waiting for the move ATR away, waiting for a full retest, waiting for a half ATR. I've changed it to three quarters, but and then getting in. If I don't get that, I don't get in. Like I wanted to get long yesterday in the equities. I just it wasn't getting uh, retested the zone. So I had to sit here and watch it. So that's how you have to determine, hey, do I want to be conservative or do I want to be aggressive? There's going to be certain times that you can be aggressive depending on how you view the markets. One of them quickly before I get off, we haven't really done this today either, <coughs> is relative volume. So you can see yesterday, let's find it real quick here. Uh, so this is, could be times where you say, when I see a zone, I am in this trade. So this, this for instance, was how much? You can see, this was the Fed meeting. You had six, almost six and a half times normal volume, the next bar, over five times. All these bars were, Oh, almost three, almost three, almost four, almost four. So you can say, I'm waiting for, I'm going to be conservative with the retest. I'm going to wait for the zone, move away, retest, fail, or in this instance, be up. But if I see huge relative volume coming in, the minute I see a zone, so say this was a stop run, the minute it gets a half ATR out of there, I'm getting in, right? This is, I'm just giving you guys examples. But this could be, this should be something you really look at is relative volume. Then again, on Sierra chart, it shows you each five minute exact five minute period for that exact time of day for the last 30 days. So I know at 12 o'clock, again, this was a kind of a different scenario because the Fed, but it's still a ton of volume coming in. I know at 12 o'clock for the last 30 days, this is six times more than usual. That is very important information to know. Once again, you can't hide transacted volume. This is just another way of looking at transacted volume. Okay. All right, unless there's any other questions I am. Yeah, I mean, I've been putting, uh, uh, there's a question on your, um, you said you mentioned like a, a, a percentage off on your um, trading room, et cetera. Uh, maybe you want to put that link into the chat again. Um, no, that was for, that was for the trading, um, this trader, hold on. I just talked to him the other day and it was actually for my trading room, but I'm offering it to you guys too, because I'm just such a nice guy. Hold on. My trading room probably won't like that so much, but they still get the same discount. It's for this Trader Sync. This this is like Trader View. I was that's what I was using before. It's like Trader View on steroids. It's incredible. I'm having the one issue with the open trade, and I got to figure out that out. This this one right here. This trade is not open, um, but I'm, their support is incredible. You can see I'm going back back and forth with them. They get right back to you. It's awesome. So anyway, the link. I'll put it in again. Did that come through last time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. So that gets you 15% off the monthly or 50% off the yearly. <clears throat> and you have to have this too, guys. Like, I know this is. Russell Lights for buy alert at RT, 152 contracts. But I mean, this is just so involved. And actually, in my trade room, we're going to have a uh, webinar on this in the next couple of weeks. They're going to come in and show how to use this the best way. I just started using this. But you can come in. You can. So let me show you real quick what I did. I haven't documented all these, and you need to go in here. But like, look at this. So, like, like this trade right here. This is when I was on the webinar. So you come in here, here's all your trades. Here's the chart. It shows your entries and exits. Look at that. How cool is that? So this is where I got short on the webinar. Remember I covered it right away because I said I had too much on. This was the hourly ATR. Oh no, remember I added to this and then I got out of some. You can see where I got out. I got out at the end of the day there because I never did get an opposing setup like I was telling you guys that. And then you come in here and you can see here, you're running p &L, and then you can, I posted all the charts. So again, this is this is so incredible, and it's so this is what you need because you want to document your stuff and you want to make playbooks. This is exactly where I got short. It's not showing here because I had to go back and replay the day because I closed out of my book map. But this was on the webinar last week. This was right around the time of the webinar. I got short. I got out right away. Again, I had too many on, and I just showed what everything looked like at that time. This was where I got in on the five-minute chart. This is what it looked like on the hourly. Right, and what was it doing here? by Seisberg by ES, 717 contracts. So I may be getting out of this short, by the way, um, based on the new setup. But anyway, this was a failed breakout we talked about, and this is where the entry occurred, right there, right below, below the high volume note. This turned out to be a monster winner. But you can see, this is incredible. And then I showed my exit, 
actually, this might be my second entry. Yeah, this is where I added. Again, this was on the bookmap webinar, so go back and watch it. That's this thing is awesome. Nice. Yes. All right, quickly, yeah, since I have this on, contract. let's draw this in. Hopefully, my S&P I Seisberg by ES 787 contract. So remember what I said, right? I'm in this trade for an hourly ATR. We didn't even discuss what that was. That is 22 points. I could get out of half regardless. S&P I Seisberg by ES. 701 contract and or an opposing setup this could be look at this ice coming 700 contracts goodness gracious um so let's draw this zone quickly and then i'm hop off here right where did that come in started coming in right here you can see it popped up to here so that's the top of the zone i'll change the colors it's this is still coming in this is 3,000 icebergs on top of the the snakes look at the snakes 1400 1400 Again, it's part of the iceberg, but they're selling. So whoever's sweeping this is sweeping right into a monster iceberg. You think that's important information to know if you're short, like I am? Sure is. So now what I'm going to do, I draw this zone. Where do I get out of this trade? Well, if I see an opposing setup, I get out a half ATR. I'm just out of the trade. And then I can decide what I want to do after that with the new setup, right? So what's half ATR? <clears throat> We're at 6.8 or 6.68 so i'm going to say seven points so three and a half points out of this zone i'm covering this short if that happens it may not happen it may keep going and i may add to this trade i'll show you that here real quick every, every time i try to get off these webinars this happens every single time bruce can attest so 94.50 is three and a half points i am out of that trade out of that short so now i can add to this trade as well i may need to make the zone bigger because there's more ice coming in but wherever this stops when this ice finally stops coming in you can see the little snakes coming in here too then if it gets an atr seven points retest failure i can add to this trade stop's going to go i'll put that if i if i enter re-enter then the stop will go a full atr for the second entry but the first entry i'll get on a half atr so this is the way you can be adding the trades not like I, so many traders struggle like when should i add when should i get out but this you can't get more regimented and rules-based than this and just do the same thing every single time. Why is it showing me Sony 2? I didn't even touch the mouse. What just happened there? Alrighty. I wasn't, I don't know what it just happened there. I did not touch the mouse. It just showed me, did I have a resting order there somehow? Or was that my, you know what that was? Oh, that was. I think you did. Yeah, you had a resting order there. That was my resting stop from my original long. Yeah. And yeah. Secondly, that was, I, I know you've never seen this one, Bruce. So this was an error. Look at that. Exact tick. So anyway, I didn't mean to short that right there. And I'm probably going to take it on the chin, but I'll just put that here. It's just incredible. Yesterday, I had the same thing happen to me. You got it. You know, I'm just like anybody else. You have mental errors. I, I didn't even see that sitting there. I forgot to delete it. How many times has that happened to everybody, right? It's like you gotta, you got to stand top of what you're doing. So that may cost me 10 points on a two level, which is not cool. Actually, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get out. This is this happened to me yesterday, and I sat there, and I got, and I watched the, 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 my room members that are in the, on this webinar could attest. The thing ran like I had a huge loss on it, and I didn't even meet. I shouldn't even have been in. And I took a big loss instead of just taking your medicine. If this happens to you, right, and you're like, oh, crap, I didn't want to be short, just get out of the trade. Don't sit there and hold and hope. And that's what I did yesterday, and I got killed. So that's why I just covered that, of course. I did, but it's fine. I didn't want to be short four. I'll be short four if it does this. But then right there, I did not want to be short. So here's another lesson at my cost, at my expense. If you do something on accident, get out of the trade. You don't need to say and hope. We're not trading. You don't need to hope with this information. Just get out and say, okay, that was stupid. I just cost myself by being an idiot, which I did. You'll get a chance to get back in or if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. Don't hope. Yesterday it cost me literally 30 points. I, I, I had a profit in the ES and I gave it all back on that one mistake because I didn't get out of the trade immediately. So once again, that's why you're on these webinars to learn from my triumphs and my mistakes. And that was just a mistake. All right, so again, this I will trade this, I will add to this trade officially. This was not supposed to be an ad. If this goes ATR retest fail, I will get in or I will stop out at ATR and wait and see what happens.
all right that was fun but again good lesson for you guys but yeah this you guys have to be doing this in your training i know it sucks but then you come down here here there you go here's my i forgot to even journal this this part is tough and when you trade just take screenshots right away because if you wait to the end of the day like i do and i have 10 trades it takes like four hours just screenshot right away and you have all this stuff and then just import it when you're done and you're going to start noticing tendencies playbooks and so on so i brought took the short on book map webinar originally under a broken i saw uh, had too many on for the size of risk so covered two right away and then added on let's see here i didn't finish this but and then you can journal this thing's incredible again it's trader view on steroids I don't care to dismiss them because I'm, I have huge problems with them and they take five days to get back to me, so I don't care. All right, Bruce, I'm done ranting, raving. Hope you guys learn from my mistakes today. And there you go. All right, uh, excellent, Scott. So uh, yeah, this one was uh, over two, almost over two hours. Um, so uh, I know you, you, we started a little bit late there, so uh, you, everyone got their money's worth, that's for sure. Um, uh, it'll take a, it'll take a while here for this to be uploaded. Um, these are all recorded uh, and uh, they'll be on our YouTube page. Uh, you'll see it under the Pro Trader webinar um, uh, playlist uh, there. So uh, uh, take a look for that. Um, other than that, uh, yeah. Nice, nice, very fine. Thank you much, Scott. Congrats. Okay, so quickly before we get off. I'm just going to make this zone bigger. Right? Yes, 706 contracts. Because you see it keeps coming in. S&P I size for by ES, 703 contracts. So that's what it is. All right. So now I still have to wait for a full ATR below what just came in to retest. Or I could go long. Once I, if I get stopped out, goes ATR retest, I'll go long based on all the stuff that just came in. Again, I'm just trading strictly on volume and nothing but profit for the last week and a half so it just shows you can be done the simpler you make your trading the better you're going to do all right i will see you next week bruce and uh everybody else hope you learned something today and yeah. we'll still be before christmas so yeah 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 one more before christmas uh thank you very much scott sure talk to you soon okay all right bye bye thanks bye. <laughs>